what are the guidelines of issue of summons under section 70 of CGST Act. The endeavour of the government has been very clear that the summons must be issued only in certain circumstances where there are situations that there is no cooperation from the taxpayer or there is a high risk of ta taxpayer absconding thereafter there are these requirements of issuance of these summons. If we see the provisions of section 70, these are interesting provisions. And if you see, if we do the threadbare analysis, what section 70 says, the proper officer under this act shall have power to summon any person. So it uses any person, which means that there are broad powers whose attendance he considers necessary, either to give evidence or to produce a document or any other thing in any inquiry now as far as evidence is concerned it is understood that you know you would require a person for attending these summons but when these are routine documents when these are those information which is available on the GST network through uh, artificial intelligence or otherwise summons must not be used to address these problems in fact even the government the board has issued certain instructions which provide that under what circumstances these summons must be issued, to whom these summons must be issued, and so on and so forth. How many times summons under Section 70 can be issued? See, generally there is no frequency on the number of times when these summons should be issued, but if we see the uh, board circular and the instructions, if these summons are not attended for thrice, then there could be judicial proceedings which could happen, uh, there could be a complaint which could be filed and hence it is important that either these summons are issued and attended or if these are illegally issued then these may be addressed by way of court intervention. Now let us discuss about the rights if summons is issued against a person. So the person who has been issued summons has a right to uh, legal advice, he can actually take uh, legal advice, uh, put facts and legal submissions in place. Lot of times it may happen that the advocate presence or the authorized representative or the child accountant or the person who may have not, uh, who may have done the work may not be allowed uh, to attend the uh, summons along with the person who's being summoned. In such a case, I think court intervention is essential uh, in case it is felt that the authorized representative or the presence of an advocate will make it only a fair process of law. What are the consequences of non-appearance to the summons? So consequences could be bad because you know a criminal complaint could be filed when most of these summons are issued these are deemed to be judicial proceedings as per the relevant provisions of IPC. Uh, there are also provisions of the IPC which could be harsh to even uh, enforce imprisonment or fine or both in certain cases. So I think it is very relevant that if these summons are issued that these are attended. Who has to attend? Uh, should an authorized person attend, uh, attend these etc. remains a question mark, remains uh, the question of fact uh, and circumstances and hence it is important that these must not be left as a chance to attend but must be given full attention. Explain the provisions regarding section 70. If you see section 70, section 70 requires, you know, any person to attend these summons, but it also requires and puts the uh, emphasis that only a proper officer must issue summon. So the person who is issuing the summon, is he a proper officer? Is the question mark. To whom the summons are issued, is it essential uh, for that person to attend the summon? Is he the right person to answer those technical queries? If this pertains to fact, then is he the right person to address also in terms of these facts? If we see the board guidelines, the board guidelines also today say that these must be issued in rarest circumstances where these are actually essential to be issued. And hence even the board has provided that there must be a written permission when these are issued by people below a particular uh, designation. And board has provided that issuance of summons may be avoided to call upon statutory documents which are digitally online available in GST portal. Similarly, senior management, should they be summoned, remains a question mark. The board has provided that these must not be summoned at the initial stage. And there is one more aspect which is important is that the summoning person, so the person who is issuing the summon must be present. 
and hence it is important for us to understand that who is the proper officer could a junior level person at uh, issue these summons be present now if these summons are issued by top management let's say for example uh, top uh, uh, government officers let's say the commissioner then commissioner has to be present for that summons and hence it is important that the right person issues these summons what are the precautions observed while issuing summons so i think these are the precautions for instance it must be issued by the right proper officer uh, it should be issued to the right person the timing must be good it should not be beyond you know normal working hours uh, you must seek that information and data which is relevant you must not ask for something which is irrelevant and sometimes it becomes necessary and why we have taken lot of these matters to the courts and courts have uh, looked at these aspects very important uh, in a in a very pragmatic way is that why is quashing of these summons required in, uh, in these cases and the reason is that if a person who's been issued summons thrice has not attended it a complaint can be filed with the jurisdictional magistrate alleging the accused has committed offense under section 172 and hence in certain circumstances it becomes imperative for us to move to the red court